Hey, 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 everybody on the YouTubes, the interwebs, the internet, the social media heaven that this wonderful life is. Hey, it's me, your host, Anthony Sika. Usually, I'm talking about comic books. I'm talking about heavy metal. I'm talking about hard rock. I'm talking about beautiful ladies. Well, guess what? As a guy who was in high school in the late 80s, there were two things I really liked. Well, three things. Rock and roll, beautiful women, and wrestling. And you know what? My next guest, Jeannie Basson, a.k.a. Hollywood, from the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. And by the way, I ain't talking about that Netflix shit. I'm talking about the OG glow, baby. And you know what? Before I bring her on, before I bring her on, we're going to show a little something, a little something, something. From the streets of Los Angeles, Hollywood! I'm Hollywood and I'm from LA, but you listen to what I've got to say. If you step, step in the ring, ring step, step on your face, face then you know how big is great. Yeah. Hey, Hollywood. And here she is. <laughs> Anthony, how are you? All right. How you doing? So what do you think is seeing yourself from what was that, 1986, 88, to facing yeah. public property there at the Riviera <laughs> Hotel? What do you think? So, what do you think of that? What a bad, bad girl she was. Oh, my goodness. Do you, do you now, I got, first off, I, I'm going to, by the way, I got a bunch of people in the chat already. You're a very popular lady. I know it's Absolutely. you. It's not me. But what I want to say right off the bat is, do you remember doing that stuff? I mean, I know you were there, but, you know, like all performers, we look back 20, 30 years and we're like, wow, is that was that me out there in those in that leotard spray painting? And I saw another wrestling match earlier today. You were ripped. Some, some, uh, your competitor was crying that you stole her poodle <laughs> and you came out with some stuffed animal and you're ripping the poodle up a classic. <laughs> of course. You know, what's so funny is some matches stand out more than others, you know, and uh, because I did four seasons, that's a lot of, of matches. Um, and sometimes, uh, Anthony, I wouldn't do one a night. We do four. So I do a wow. tag team and I do a singles match. I'd come in and do, you know, um, a battle Royal and then something else. So it was a lot of work in one night. So like I said, some stand out more than others. Some I'll be like, wow. You know, it, it, it's hard to remember all of them, but sure. for the most part, Part, blah, for the most part, of course. Sometimes I still have to pinch myself and say, "Oh my God, who is that girl?" You know. <laughs> well, let's let's go back then to the beginning. So, it's actually the show aired in 1986, but you you ladies auditioned for the show in 1985. How did you get the audition? Tell us first of all. So there was a pilot that we had to we had to do first. So. Um, what were you doing at the time? Were you uh -huh. modeling, so, acting? No, no modeling at all. I okay. hadn't even started doing any acting at all. I was wow. a phlebotomist in a lab. So that's wow. Right. Yeah, right. So far. Um, but I had done one little tiny thing and um, just went straight back to my to the medical stuff. But I had a um, the agency called and left the voicemail. And they said, we have a uh, a sports show 
um, that we want you to come out and audition for. So I went to this audition, uh, my very first audition I've e ever been on. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of girls at this audition. And then David McLean came out and told us that this TV show that they were going to film was going to be about women's wrestling. They did say sports, but they didn't say what kind. Sure, sure. I was like, oh boy, I don't know anything about wrestling. I know, you know, softball and volleyball and football and stuff like that. But I didn't know about the wrestling. So I went and, you know, trained and they needed 12 girls. They made it, you know, they told us we need 12 girls to do the pilot. Um, I was one of the ones that went through the whole training. Um, they called my character Hollywood. We filmed in 1985 at the Riviera Hotel. And uh, we took it to Nappy, which is for syndication. That was in New Orleans at the time. And there was four of us, Matilda the Hun, myself, Tammy Jones, and Americana, with David McLean and our director, Matt Simber. So we took our show with our executive producers down there, and we sold it. Um, so I quit my job in 1986 in April, moved to Las Vegas and started um, with the first season of Glow at the Riviera Hotel. Yeah. Now, when you start, I, I got a question too, uh, something uh, in research. Now, was Jackie Stallone, Sylvester Part of it. mom involved in the show in the beginning? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was, she played the good girls. That's name. right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they used her, you know, for her name. Somebody must've knew her and said, let's bring her in. It was a name well, for the good girls. And we had aunt Kitty for the bad girls. Which, right. And what was it? Kitty's kills or killers? Kitty or killers. Right. Kitty's okay. Killers. So aunt Kitty really was the aunt of our director. So, that ah. was, so see how that works. So that was his aunt. Very nice. Uh, we got a lot of comments. We'll go over them later. Wow. They're, they, as you can see, Jeannie, the comments are coming in. Where can faster. I see them? Can I see them at all? Or yeah, no? yeah. I'm popping them up on the screen right now. You can't see them on the, on the no. screen? Oh, okay. Well, it's too, yeah. That's I got okay. you. I got you. Too far away from me. I yeah, 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 yeah. I'll A little later when we get a little break in the time, I'll, I'll reread some of them. That'd be very, awesome. Very complimentary. Uh, Thank some, you, everybody. Some, here's here's one, Daytona Falls, who's about my age, a little younger. He says, "I thought Glow was better than Dude Wrestling when I was a kid." <laughs> he says, "Hail puberty." So anyway, so that was a Thank thing you. too. I mean, um, now when you you get the audition, you mm -hmm. you nail the audition. They did they assign you a name right away, Hollywood, based on personality. Yeah, what exactly? How much were like Hollywood and Vine, the tag team that you were a part of, which was a good name thing, even though you fought singles matches too? Uh, did you choose your persona or did the producers give them to you? So basically, when they explained to us we need 12 girls, these are the characters that we're oh, looking for. I got so you. We, we already knew, and I'm thinking. I can't be Tammy Jones. I don't sure. know. I could I could be maybe Americana. There was Tina and Ashley. I go, ooh, that sounds exciting. There was a Royal Hawaiian. I'm like, nah, I don't want no, like that. That's not gonna fly. And then when they said Hollywood and Vine, I'm like, oh, that's it. There you go. So based so based on our personalities, they get we didn't have a choice. They gave us that character. And when he said, Jeannie, your character is Hollywood, I was ecstatic. I'm like, awesome. yes. And that's who that's who I wanted to be very badly. So. Now you have the distinction. Are you one of the only, if not the only wrestler to do all four seasons? I'm not the only one to do all okay. four seasons. I'm the only one to do the pilot and all four seasons. Oh, okay. See that's how right. that works. And you you were in a you were in a tag team match in the pilot with um Vine Tina Ferrari, Vine. right? Was yep. your Hollywood and Vine Eddie. and mm -hmm. all right, okay. All right. Yeah. Now, now Tina went on to be in WWE, right? She sure did. Absolutely. Okay. What was her name again? The, she was the champion for a while. Um, just I, forget. Was it name. Ivory? Uh, it's Ivory, of course. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. See my. You know what? As it, old as I am, my memory is coming back. <laughs> it's all good. But um, what I can't remember, you you can remember. But Ivory, yeah. absolutely, and so, she just went on to be. Amazing. And she was great in sure, Glow, first of sure, all. Sure. She was just, she had the package. You know, you see stuff on TV, The Voice or whatever, and you see people that have the whole thing. They have the looks, yeah. they have the sex appeal, yeah. they have the talent. 
Well, well, and let's take it did. back. Let's take it back a little too. So you got the audition. You have the role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the first episode of uh, the pilot or the episode when you guys get signed a- airs in 86, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. From the minute you got the role to the first pilot, how much train now Mon- Mando Guerrero was your trainer. Was our trainer. Yeah. How, how long did you guys train before you were ready to, to broadcast? Because the thing on the Netflix show, they act like they did a couple of days and it was over and they're ready to go. And there were yeah, a lot of a lot of cocaine and a lot of wing in it. Yeah. I want to know truthfully though, what kind of regiment did they have you guys on before uh, broadcasting? So let me make it clear because sure. I've seen so many uh, girls interview. Mondo Guerrero only trained only trained the pilot girls oh he did not train season one or season two or season three or season four mondo was there for about two two and a half months he trained those first 12 girls okay okay so so mondo only so we had two months of tra- so two months of training so this was um every other day so it was monday wednesdays friday seven to ten o'clock at night so here i am working my day job eight to five going home getting ready to learn how to wrestle and it was hardcore wrestling because this wasn't what you saw in glow netflix right you know it, it was hardcore training and um you listen to exactly what mondo said i actually right. got to see mondo again actually at uh in december at la comic-con and we talked we took photos and he was so great I hadn't seen him in an interview with us in a very, very long time. So to get back with him and get his point of view, um, instead of our point of view, it was awesome. Right. And um, he he enjoyed what he said. People made fun of him. Some of the wrestlers. What are you doing? You're going to train these girls. You know what I mean? So he had a little bit of um, what's the word I'm looking for? He you know, he had some people. Uh, I'm not looking for the word making fun of him, but, but, you know, it, it was hard for us and it probably sure. was difficult for him as well. He goes, no way. He goes, I'm doing it. I was asked to do it and sure. I'm going to train these sure. women well. And he did, he did, the, the, you know, and you don't get, and let me tell you something, two months, it, two months doesn't mean you are a pro wrestler. Right. You need right. months and months of training. Um, we didn't get all that training, but right. we did the best that we could do for what we were given at the time. After Mondo left, David McLean brought in one of his girls um, out of Indiana, uh, another pro wrestler, and she trained. And then he brought in Killer Tomato, uh, Debbie, who played uh, Dallas on our show. She trained. Then from there, it trickled down to I Glow Girls training Glow Girls. Okay. That is the exact truth. So if you hear it anywhere else that Mondo mm-hmm. trained any other season, no. He trained the pilot girls only. Hey, I'm going to take this moment to interrupt. I have my co-host, Daryl Wood, joining us for Virginia. A big, uh, big wrestling Hi, fan. Daryl. Hello. Big wrestling fan here with uh, with Jeannie Basson, a.k.a. Hollywood OG glow girl. Uh, Daryl, I want to ask Jeannie a, a little follow up to that to those questions. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep us in this vertical format because Jeannie's okay. in the vertical format, and we want to see as much of Jeannie as possible because that's really why people are checking out the uh, the YouTube stream tonight. And I will go back, everybody in the chat. I got a lot of people chatting. I will come back and address all of you guys uh, when I have an opportunity, but. Jeannie Basone, we were talking about your training that uh, in two months, two months does not make a pro wrestler, but then you were having other other female wrestlers, people that uh, McLean was bringing in to help right. you guys. Now, That's right. but what I have to ask is in that two month, were there glow girls that dropped out that we never saw because of a injuries b they were like fuck this we're not doing this no more yeah, or c this ain't our bag um right. was what did was the cast solid or did you guys lose some folks to injuries or maybe some ladies who couldn't physically cut it 
That's a great question because that's exactly what happened. So you know which ones are going to stay in there for, for the long of it. So first and second season, those ladies were all in for the hall. We added more girls, right. all right? Like Dallas came in and Mountain Fiji was added uh, to that as well. Uh, the Farmer's Daughter was added, uh, Tara, the Southern Belle, um, Olympia. So we had a lot of new characters. So we, so us girls who did our job did the pilot. We put our asses out there. We didn't know what we were doing. <clears throat> to be honest, we didn't even know. We were not fans of the show because there was no show. There was sure. no show like it. Right. Okay. So later when girls started coming in, they were fans of the show and they were like, oh, I'm going to try an audition, but we didn't know. So we sat down that foundation for them. Um, so I would, I would say season one and two was really solid. Then we lost everybody after season two, David McCain left to form POW, P-O-W-W. Uh, the girls were gone. I remember them wanting residuals. We were on TV and a lot of ladies were actresses. I was not an actress. So I wasn't aware of what Screen Actors Guild and After was back then. I wow. knew it from them. And I heard them saying we should be paid this amount because this is what union is. And our show was not a union show. It was a non-union show. I didn't care if it was union back then or not. I just knew that I had an opportunity to perform and keep, and so I wanted to keep going forward. So when people left, we, um, I stayed, um, but that took a little coaxing. I had to come in and say, okay, I'd like A and B and C, but I got A and B, not right. C, but that's okay. And so we had all new girls in season three and four. Right. So pe people will ask me, what season do you like? I like all the seasons, but for me, my heart lays in season one and two, right. the pilot girls for sure. I'm gonna it's throw like it over. Island. I'm gonna throw it over to Daryl. Daryl, uh, nice to see you. Thank you for coming on this yeah. evening. I know you wanted to be on the broadcast, and uh, I know you have some wrestling uh, expertise, some fandom, and I just like the fact that I found someone else who used to watch Glow back it. in the day. Uh, you know, Jeannie, the problem is, is a lot of gentlemen my age who went to high school in the '80s. Some of us didn't see Glow. Because it wasn't on the cable stations that were in areas, certain areas. I saw Glow back uh, in Staten Island when I was in high school. And then when I first um, moved in down to Florida in 88, um, right. I it was down on the cable station here. I was, And that was probably in the last season or close to the last season. Daryl, right. please uh, throw some questions your way for Jeannie. Well, first of all, I, I apologize for being late. Uh, some family issues have come up that you know had to be yeah to take care of sir had, had to be attended to. So, if something I that. ask has already been answered, I do apologize. Okay. First off, um, the rapping, which <laughs> I absolutely love to this day. Every once in a while, I will go back and just watch some of these, and <laughs> both smile and laugh and cringe a little. Right. I mean, well, how, not, much we creative uh, how much creative control did you guys have of those? A lot of creative control. <laughs> lot. I love that. That's great. A lot. They they were good about that. They're like, you know, we had one writer. At the beginning, we had a couple of writers. And then we had Stephen Blantz, who to this day is one of my dear friends in New York. And, you know, if you had some trouble, he would help you out. But for the most part, the girls did their own. I remember uh, MTV was helping a lot of the girls. That was one of the girls in season three and four. And she was really good at it. So she'd help out some ladies. But for the most part, you know, we did our own matches. We wrote out our own matches um you know and came up with that and as far as our outfits if you most of the girls always had the same outfits but if you look at hollywood mine change all the time mm -hmm. and that's because i didn't i would find something that i really liked and i wouldn't take it that was towards the end i said i'm gonna wear a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny anthony i would just get clothes i'd go back to hollywood I'd buy Vine and I stuff and we would wear it. I would never have it okayed. I just would put it on. So sometimes I'm in zebra print. Sometimes I'm in the pink outfit. Sometimes I'm in that silver outfit. <laughs> there you go. So there was my creative control. No one told me no. So I did that. Okay. Now, when it came to teams, Hollywood and Vine, mm -hmm. how close were you guys? 
We were very close because we had to be very close. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't see what teams you have to be. Yeah, you had to be. Um, I never met her. She was from Canada, so we were opposite in certain things because she always said to me, why is it Hollywood and Vine? Why does Hollywood get to come out and Vine comes out second? I said, well, there's some streets in California called Hollywood and Vine. And I said, if you want to go out, you go out first. But she didn't understand that, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she did understand it and just hated that I was coming out first. I don't know. Great, great question, Daryl. Hey, Jeannie, I'm yeah. going to give the chat some love right now. Yeah, let's do I know it. you. I'm yeah. just going to read all the comments as quick as I can be. Daytona okay. Falls, have a great show. Star Thank Killer, you. 195, hello, hello. Pop Culture Avenger saying hello to everybody. North Free, hail Anthony Sika, Hollywood and the Mighty Chat. Pop culture chiming in. Uh, North Free pretty much saying hello to everyone. Star Killer 195, Hollywood exclamation point. Uh, North Free, Glow was great fun. Star Killer 195 says, My mom watched Glow when it first premiered in 86. Star Killer, I was watching it in 86 as a sophomore in high school loving every minute i'm like oh i can't believe what i just found um, <laughs> ahoy mates and mermaids Damn. hail genie basone a uh, genie the real hollywood basone no hollywood hogan puts in there uh again daytona falls had the best line of the night he says i thought glow was better than dude wrestling when i was a kid hail puberty <laughs> um mike rand says hi genie uh, North Free says the ladies of Glow were truly strong, independent women. Tough. Star Killer One Ninety Five also says true pioneers of women wrestling. Thank you, North Free Master Mando Guerrero, teaching yes. these ladies the Guerrero's rule. Guerrero's you know what? He was, he was ahead of the time with the Mandalorian. Um, <laughs> Hi, Aaliyah Comic Bro, our good friend says best Hello. Glow mo girl moment. Was when the girl dislocated her elbow. Who was that? Uh, that was Susie Spirit. Susie, Susie Spirit, Spirit, right? That's not, that's she, not a great yeah. moment. She and Americana no. used to tag team against you guys, correct? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Hylia also says Glow was a must watch. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Pop Culture Avenger states what we all are thinking. Jeannie looks amazing. I don't know how you're still 25 years old, Jeannie, but whatever. That was a good question. I was going to ask that, too. Mount Fuji was love a beast. Mount Fuji. Water. Yeah. Water. Well, Wa oh, there we go. There's her secret. Water and soap. But we'll get to that. Wow. Uh, people commenting on um, Tia Ferrari's uh, name. Jeannie had classic matches against Sally, the farmer's daughter. Oh my God, those were the best matches because we hated each other, you guys. Wow. We really did. For oh. real? We, we, did, we went to the same high school. We oh. Went to the same high school and you go to the same school, you know, the same mm. people. Now you're going to be on television. You're like, wait a minute. Wait a second here. I can't lose and she can't lose. Seems, and a baby face and seems I'm like that makes for good drama. Oh my God, it was great. North Free matches. North Free says, Glow, the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling is one of the best wrestling docs ever. I agree. I agree. I wish that Hollywood Vine and Broadway Rose would wrestle as a tag team together back then. That would have been great. Uh, we got 24 eyes just with a bunch of either those are owls or penises. I can't tell. Um, uh, recently passed away. Matilda the Hun, no. correct? Was yes, simply awesome. Yep. Uh, again, much respect. North Free set calls her the Andre the Giant of Ladies Wrestling. Absolutely. God bless her. Uh, Star recently, Killer. Yeah, Don't go ahead. Go ahead. No, go and ahead. Recently, we lost um, a, uh, Angel, Angel oh. as well. Yeah. Where Did you keep you, you in, know what's? Were you in yeah, touch with those ladies? I really wished I, I could have been in touch with Matilda the Hun. I tried. I went back two years looking at trying to get a hold of her and uh somebody was blocking that for some of us that we couldn't get to see her oh, and that's okay maybe too stressful. yeah yeah I yeah but you. so you know but all good optimus primal says hollywood rocks you're super inspirational and beautiful thank you 
North Free was commenting about when you guys were talking about your rap and everything. He said, that's the problem with modern wrestling. The wrestlers have no creative control. A booking that's, committee, that's actually why I asked that question. A booking committee decides. Yeah. Well, My, as far as winning and losing, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to follow. But sure. we could do whatever we wanted. If we wanted glass, if we wanted whatever we wanted, we could do. You know? um, hi, Jeannie. Someone named Michael Strider saying hi. Michael Strider's the director of the movie in May. Hi, wow. Michael. Michael, Norman. We're, Michael, we're going to, we're going to get to that in a, in a couple of minutes. I just want to wrap up the wrestling stuff. Cause that's what everybody's here for, but I'm going to plug, Mike. I'm going to plug your motion, your theatrical release. Mike Rand, he asks, ask Jeannie about her skits with David McLean and Aunt Kitty. <laughs> Let's hold that for a moment. Just let me read a couple more and then okay. cool. Uh, they had legitimate heat. So they were that was North oh, yeah. talking about your stuff with Sally. Um, with Sally. Sally. But let's go back to Mike Rand. Ask Jeannie about her skits with David McLean and Aunt Kitty. Those were great. So at the end of the show, David, uh, Aunt Kitty and myself would come to the show. We'd in we'd end the show with Aunt Kitty and myself walking up to David's room. Aunt Kitty would knock on the door and she would try to set me up with David McLean and David McLean would always just go, Oh, he, he never wanted that. They were the funniest sketches. We had pies that we threw in his face and it, it was just funny. Like I said, those shows always ended with myself, aunt Kitty and David McLean. And those are sketches that I'll never forget. Plus the other sketches that I also did were the PSA commercials. They had to get a bad girl, a bad girl to um, do the anti-drug commercials and drinking that that we um we did and those those ran through the show as well so that was kind of cool so i, I enjoyed doing those so yeah. you had you so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tie this genie from glow all the way to michael strider and watch how we do yeah. so okay. <laughs> glow goes off the air finally in 89 closer to 90 yeah okay uh -huh. so What'd you do right after? I still continue to wrestle. Was the the married with children episode that was toward the end yeah. of Glow? Um, I met all the executive producers at that convention in New Orleans. So I didn't even know that we were even going to do a show with them. I remember them saying, Hollywood, come and meet married with children executive producers. Right. Met them. And then all of a sudden, myself, Big Bad Mama, and a different farmer's daughter, right. uh, Babe. There are a lot Babe of farmer's farmer. daughters. Yeah, we had three. Yeah. And Babe, the farmer's daughter, and I had this audition. We went into the audition. I'm looking for the rest of the girls. I'm like, where is everybody? They wanted Hollywood. They wanted Babe. And they wanted uh, um, Big Bad Mama. Yeah. So it so that was great. So we 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 did those. And you know, a lot of girls did some acting in between all of that. Yeah. We we you know we did several things, but that was a to be on Mary with children back then, that was huge. And you were also on, what was it, Phil Donahue or? We did Phil Donahue, yeah, we did Phil Donahue. That was huge as well. Jesse, um, what's her name? Mike Sally, Williams, Jesse, uh, Raphael. Sally, Sally Jesse, Raphael. Sally, Jesse, Raphael, mm -hmm. yep, yep. And That's an it, interesting story. And we before, that one. and now there was a very famous magazine too that. Playboy. Playboy, uh, yes. pictorial. It was yes. the girls of glow, correct? It was called Lethal Women. Lethal so, Women. 1989. And you you were one of the models in that, right? I sure was. What what there issue three what three girls? What December. month is that? That's December 89. All right, December 89. All you fellas watching, go on eBay right now. <laughs> Jeannie, or Jeannie, Jeannie is not shy about it. She was signing copies at the comic convention. Well, but I, I'm laughing at, at, at your face, man. <laughs> That's what what? I'm <laughs> not yours, not your Jeannie, not yours. What? He, he, look, oh, he, looks, right. like, he looks so happy. So yeah, happy. Can you see way. can't you see the glow? <laughs> yeah, not one, but two and shades. He's wearing it. So um yeah, and but hey, here's Jeannie I, I'm on my shirt. Good, so, good for you. Hollywood and Vine shirt. Um, so Playboy. Yes. How did that come about? That's they so just exciting. call you up and say. Yep. No, they didn't call me. They have to go. They went through Glow. 
Right. And I remember speaking with our director about it and he says we get to pick. I mean, so here's here's an interesting thing. How does we had so many girls? How do you pick? Which ones do you pick? And how do you, you know, I, I, A, I was not sleeping with anybody in GLOW. Uh, B, I'd been on the show now for three seasons, almost four seasons. Um, so it was myself, it was Thunderbolt, and she wasn't sleeping with anybody. And it was Godiva, another a beautiful, both of them were beautiful. And so he picked us three to be the models uh for Playboy, of course, there's other ladies in that um, sure, sure. particular uh, pictorial. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that was just like for me a dream come true to do it because I always thought when I was younger, oh, wouldn't it be cool to pose in Playboy, uh, to be on television, oh, to give out an Academy Award? These are things when you're a child that you think about just because you Dreams know. Dreams do come true. Yeah, they do. They can. Do. Two of them. Remember that. I may not have seen that issue. So I'm remember, there. remember everybody, December 1989. Yeah. I bring right. them to the conventions. I sign yes. them. I have them. Um, I bring them. They're, you know, they're hidden away. Like Howard Simon. Howard Simon says, loved watching Glow in Brooklyn when it was on. Still, have the, mag still have the magazines. And I'm sure glowing now. Hooray. Oh, best line of the night. Hooray for, ho for Hollywood. Very cool. I love it. Hi, Howard. Thank you. North Free says, Hollywood, did you enjoy the independent circuit? What was your experience like in wrestling after Glow? North Free, that was my next question. After Glow, I, after I Playboy. That, that area as well. Someone also brought up that you did 15 episodes of Family Feud as well during Glow. Sure did. And, did someone, wow. and someone says... Four touchdowns in a single game. LOL. Going to have to hunt down that Bundy's episode. But <laughs> getting back to the question from North Free, uh, independent circuit. Jeannie, you, you started wrestling after GLOW, correct? I did. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. So it was different. It was a lot different than GLOW because now there's men that you've never – that are on the card – and a couple of women and lightning and myself did that circuit um for a little while um the pay we want we did really good with pay i have to tell you that we would say we're only working for this amount we're not going to work for this amount but we need this amount so we got that i don't know i think today's a lot different the pay sure. is different but it wasn't then so we got paid but it was that was pro style wrestling you know and lightning and i always we started competing against each other she was um a good girl and me being in the hill and when she would do a frankensteiner on me man whoo that, that's a that's a difficult that's some timing to do a frankenstein on someone uh yeah. without making sure their head isn't gonna slam into the mat so um very real very different not as glamorous not as glitzy you know uh but another way to learn your trade Get in there and do it. Let's, yeah, me and me and uh, Daryl. Daryl, uh, have a technical question in mind for Jeannie. Jeannie, I'm going to ask you a vague but yet technical question. What okay. was your favorite move? For me, the flying head scissor. Uh, just getting up there and bringing somebody down without using the ropes. Just jumping up and bringing them down. Right. And, you know, you spawned all those Marvel movies, all those head scissors that they do every scene. <laughs> um, Jeannie. Also, a little <laughs> follow-up with all those great wrestling moves. Um, you were never hurt, were you? I'm knocking on wood. No, no I was not. My last not name is all. Wood. Feel free. Uh, Darryl, I did, people beat the crap out of me every time someone said knock on wood. I'm going to throw it over to Daryl. Daryl, ask Jeannie some technical questions. Well, one of the questions I was wondering is um, the lady who ended up in WWE in the Hall of Fame who yes. became Ivory yeah. yes. and started out on GLOW. Uh, is, Tina, was that, Tina was that the woman you were saying that you were training with after yep. in the independence working with? Lisa? Was I training with her? Lisa Moretti, I'm sorry. Was yeah. I training with her? I tra we only trained with Wando. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I meant oh. like, like post because you said you were in the independence. No. no. Okay. I never saw her, but she wasn't in WWE then. As soon yeah, as I got yeah, out, yeah, this came way she later. She was in it later. Me. So, no, yeah. I did not wrestle with her, unfortunately. 
Um, I don't know what year you guys might know the year, but I know it was later. It was mm -hmm. later. So I did not see her on the independent scene. No. And I was only in it for a little while, not long. Mm -hmm. And then uh, years. let's, let's talk about now let's fast forward to post nine 11, maybe last 10 years, what have you. Um, keeping the I, name alive. Always yeah, keeping glow alive. I think I, I was the only one back then doing it. I want to talk about something non-glow related real quick, though. I want to show off something here. Okay. Called Hollywood Botanica. Oh, my side gig. What yeah. is this? Yes. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> so what are you nice. selling here, Jeannie? Is this so? Oh, that's so sweet of you. Yeah, my little side gig. I started in 2018 just, okay. you know, making a soap that doesn't have preservatives in it that's good for you and it took me so a while to kind of figure it out but i've been doing it for three years and then the pan the pandemic happened and who what do we need more of soap so boy so it's just a side gig it's something that i enjoy when i get off the road um i like coming home and really chilling out and when i make my soap that's very relaxing and um you know it's kind of cool so hollywood botanica it seems like it seems like this stuff is pretty inexpensive too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's I charge eight dollars and fifty cents a bar for it, but you're I'll tell you what's in it. It's organic coconut oil, olive oil, coconut, uh, organic coconut oil, shea butter, castor oil, uh, and olive oil, and then you need sodium hydroxide to make soap, which is lye, and uh, some water and some essential oils, and there you have it. That's it. But you just got to make sure you got to be kind of a chemist over here because you got to make sure that you don't add too much of this and not enough of that and a little bit of that. That all comes in time. Um, but I do have a nice, I've been doing it for so long, I could probably do it in my sleep. So, I, again, there's no preservatives in any of it, so it's good for you. So we go to Hollywood Botanica with a K. With a K. Botanica.com. Uh, so, everybody, so everybody go buy some sexy soap because even the soap, <laughs> You know what? Look, even the soap looks sexy. You guys see that? I the mean, videos you make of these look amazing, and I'm guessing you have the best smelling house around. Oh, you know what? Everybody comes in. They go, "Oh my God, your house!" You, we, I can't tell that there's a smell in here because I, I'm in it. Yeah. But they go, "Oh, your house smells so good." Yeah, pretty cool. I love people, tree eucalyptus. I have. Hi, kitty. My kitty's coming in. People are. I'm looking. I'm looking. People are stuff. watching this right now, saying, "What the heck kind of stream did we just jump on?" <laughs> I know, right? All good. That All was right. my but soap, everybody. Just a side. Thank back. you for mentioning that. That was. Very oh good. yeah. So, so, so after we showed HollywoodBotanica.com, I have to ask, how long have you been doing that? Three years. How did you learn? You doing that yourself, right? So I went online, I looked it up and did my due oh. diligence. I bought books. I started oh. reading the books. So you did then, work. Oh, hell yeah. You have you to know do what? I've, You don't just put a product down. Everybody, because... I've met Jeannie in person. And I got to say, this woman has a strong work ethic. Whether it's <laughs> appearing live, whether it's wrestling. Now. Not only is she a soap maker and a organic soap entrepreneur and a veteran iconic female wrestler, she's also starring in a new movie directed by who? Guy who was in the chat earlier. Um, Tell us about wanna, it. So, if you want to follow this friend on Instagram, it's Strider Image. Um, the name of this film is called lake norman so basically it's uh what would jason michael myers leatherface do on their day off it's a comical twist <laughs> off of all those 80s horror flicks uh hot chicks and uh, lots of killings and so uh hollywood's gonna play a character for them and we're gonna start in may and i'm super excited it's an independent film we're gonna take it to uh festivals and uh, some conventions so I'll have a cool fight scene in it. Um, so, Michael, thank you. If I've missed anything, you can you can chat in the um, YouTube there. But I'm excited. 
Pop Culture Avenger says, that's a fantastic framed pic hanging <laughs> on the wall behind you. Oh, yeah, John Abeda. <laughs> yeah. That's Thank great. That's awesome. uh, North Free says, Hollywood, looking back, what is your the favorite match of your career? Great question. Ooh, that's always good. It's so hard when you did four seasons of matches, you know, uh, in honor of Matilda the Hun. And I told you certain matches stick out. The Gestapo match is one of my favorite and controversial type of matches. We're coming out in gear that looks like we're uh, Nazis in Germany. Mm -hmm. So it, it's Matilda <laughs> Hun. Hollywood and Vine versus Americana, Mountain Fiji, Little Fiji. I mean, you know, Germany against America. And oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> we, we went shopping for the props for that. We had whips and we had files and we had gas masks and we had all these terrible, terrible things. We had to, uh, uh, they're singing, you know, um, their American anthem, and we're doing the German one, Deutschland, Deutschland, du for all this. Here's the interesting thing. One thing that sticks out about that match, obviously <laughs> the bad guys lose, but you guys listen to this. After the match was over, now we were doing this at the Riviera Hotel. My room and Vine's room was in the back of the hotel. As I passed the swimming pool and I looked at the diving board, somebody had put swastikas all over all over the i'm like holy shit so the power of television and the power of doing stuff like that man i was just like ooh, that's scary i was like i'm getting to my room quick you know that was just that was real that was surreal to me seeing wow. that you yeah. guys were doing like lingerie matches we did strip matches absolutely years yeah. before the wwf years before the later yeah. wwe oh, yeah. We, we um, definitely, we broke that ceiling, you know, that glass ceiling. We we definitely did that. The seasons one and two, we got away yeah. with a lot. By the time season three and four came, uh-uh, censorship and people were yeah. calling. No, you can't do that. You can't make fun of somebody in a straitjacket. You can't. So they had to tame it down quite a bit. Yeah. How, how are the fans, uh, Jeannie? Um, Wonderful. <laughs> looking at all those beautiful women. Uh, they were with, tame. They were really good. Were they? they allowed drinking. You know, you could drink. Sure. They were, you know, you're at a casino or okay. you're outside of the casino. Uh, very tame. We didn't have to worry about. We had um, security. Okay. Uh, and, um, but nobody got out of hand. I don't remember anyone getting out of hand. We were acting like we were getting out of hand. So when, when I had security pull me, I would just kick my legs up as high <laughs> as possible and make it look like, no, I'm not going, <laughs> you know, right. you know, we, we, oh, you know, I gotta say though, to be alive and to be in that era of the 80s, what a wonderful time to be alive. The music, first off, getting away with what we got to get away with, having our director, Matt Simber, direct us, and David McLean's idea of wrestling. Wow, the raps. It's a good time to be, to be in that. The only thing we miss is this, these, the cell right. phones. You right. know, it, that's what it would have made it super well. huge. Maybe like not. It is it is. Maybe not. Yeah. I Maybe not. You know things things happen at a certain time for a certain reason. Sure. Now, what astounds but. what astounds me, and again, I'm not blowing smoke here. Jeannie, you were on TV in 1986, <laughs> and I'm looking at you, and you must be drinking a lot of water or was there an episode where you made a deal with the devil at the crossroads? That's all I'm saying because uh, Sweet. I'm going to tell you, I've oh, seen time machine. I've seen a lot. Uh, I saw that movie last week, by the way. I've seen a lot of the other women that were in Glow, and they're not glowing anymore. So it's all no I gotta disrespect tell. intended. No disrespect <laughs> intended. But but let me let me let me go back though, Jeannie. From what you know, if you're just joining us. She has kept busy wrestling, yeah. organic soap maker. You were doing uh, now. You're doing this new film with uh, Michael Strider, who's doing this horror parody. Um, 
Our first shoot was your American flag bikini in Times Square. Oh, it was. Yes, I remember. It was freezing. Is but that a new yet. shoot? Is that a shoot for the new movie? Uh, or are you yeah, talking about way back when? No, he's talking about when I first. Um, oh, you know, we did a shoot many years ago. I've known Michael for over twenty years. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, you're... he's a photographer. He shot a lot of um, bands as well. He's directed. All right. Uh, Michael so... Michael says in the chat we are planning to have it ready by Halloween this year. Awesome. Um, so, Jeannie, did you have you besides Married with Children? Um, this new movie with Strider, Family Feud. Uh, did have and you a lot of stunt work and a lot? Oh, of that's work. right. You were doing right? stunt work, correct? Yeah. And I Cheryl saw... Lightning Rusa got me into that in the first place. Wow. Little little Lightning. So you went right from pro wrestling, uh, doing some into more wrestling, stuff, and into then more did wrestling, stunt work, huh? And then did the stunt work. Is yeah, there any absolutely. particular films that we we would have seen you behind the scenes? Yeah, you know, well, one of a TV show that I enjoyed was Chuck. Um, they needed women that, yeah, that That's I know. Awesome. I mean, that one. It's, it's my seduction. favorite show. That's Literally awesome. my favorite it's called show. The seduction, I think it's called the, the seduction impossible. Um, there is a scene where they need women who are not afraid to shoot automatic weapons. And I am one of those that had some experience with that because if you have a skill, you write down all the skills that you can do. So I was hired because of that skill. Let me tell you something. When a stunt coordinator has four women and he's giving you direction, let me explain this particular scene. Uh, Chuck and the girl are behind looking through some holes, you know, in the wall. Uh, while we're here and there's two other characters in front of us, there's four of us ladies with machine with machine guns, AK-40. I don't know what they are. They were those kind of weapons. Sure. I'm holding one that's very heavy um the other girls have these plastic ones so he says to me genie i'm going to give you direction and he did it immediately he says one don't when you fall backwards watch your head two you've got one of the real guns don't let it hit you in the face when you fall back three there's a girl over here don't land on her four there's another girl here don't land on her five hold the gun above their head action boom go and it was just like <laughs> Go. We did it in two wow. takes. We have no padding uh, on the on the ground behind us. We have our padding that we have for our elbows, you know, and behind your back here on your butt. And that's about it. And you take that fall backwards. So that sticks out a lot. And of course, you go into the whole gun thing that we've seen recently in the news and, you know, a good stunt coordinator and people will give you those rules ahead of time. Um, some people have bigger budgets than others. I mean, yeah. I think when you have less of a budget, you, you're you're lacking on a lot of that training and stuff that needs to be set in movies today. So we got um, about, we have about six, seven minutes left. I want to ask you, and then I'm going to give the, the uh, interview to Daryl for some closing questions. Um, what's next for Hollywood and or Jeannie? Conventions. So we have conventions. So the next convention, I do a lot of conventions. I've been doing that when glow ended, keeping that glow name alive. Uh, the next one is here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a it's a horror comic one on March 20th. After that, with John Crowder, uh, Crowther that did my, you remember this, remember. Anthony? Yeah. The comic. Yeah. I'll be in Jacksonville in June uh, with this, and then it'll be more coming up. You know, as COVID is hopefully hopefully going, we hope going down. We'll be doing more. I know, right? Cross our fingers. Gosh. I don't want any more variants around. It's, it's tough. well. So, oh, so you'll be in Jacksonville in June, huh? Yeah, I'll do that. Jacksonville, I think. I'll be sure to. Right. I'll be sure to come see you. I live about an yeah. hour south of Jacksonville, so. Yeah, so um, I can't think of the name of it right this minute. And then, um, and then more importantly, is uh, Ace Freely going back on tour this oh, year? Oh yeah, they start. Guess what? They're on the road March second. Nice. Yeah. Now your 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 other half, Ryan, yeah, Ryan. right? Yep. He is the guitar it. rhythm guitarist. One of, he's one of the guitarists. Nice, yes, nice. Absolutely. And he's been off since uh, before Christmas. When so. is he going to come on my podcast? I don't know. I'll have to ask him. I'm going to ask him or ask him okay. for me because I'll will. do a whole I'll do a whole Kiss Ace Freely Gene oh, Simmons love podcast it. with him. Oh, Ryan's right? a huge historian of all of it. So. That well, I am a super super huge Kiss fan. Perfect. Seen, seen Ace Freely maybe 10 times. I Not with it. Ryan, though. So No. 
you got to see what this lineup because with this lineup they make ace look really sound now, really good little i don't know is there a secret is ace going back out by himself or is he going back with cooper again who is he with do you can you uh, say cooper. with cooper really okay that's awesome well yeah. i hope they come to florida and i get to see him so right now i know it's west coast i know gotcha. it'll be california hmm. uh and there's some east coast stuff but they're adding and adding if you guys just go to acefreely.com you'll see all the news nice stuff. star killer 195 says uh already done Smash that like button for Hollywood and all the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Also, for everybody, here's my chance to promote. If you're new to my my channel, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications button. I do stuff on music, pop culture, ladies wrestling, Ace Freely, comic yeah. books, whatever. So anyway, please hit subscribe one man gang over there with Daryl. I'm going to ask you, give Jeannie a good two or three, four questions. Cause I've been talking all night and Jeannie, uh, if you can stay for a few more minutes, we'll wrap mm -hmm. this up. But I want to get Daryl and get you some good of questions. Course. Here. Of Hit course. her, Daryl. Well, I, I've got various directions I can go with this. Cause I, I didn't no. know if, uh, if I, if it was okay to go down the music route, Go, no. but first I'll go down the, the wrestling route. You mentioned your favorite move. What was your least favorite move to be in that someone else did? Like the Frankensteiner, I understand why. That oh my god, the you. Frankensteiner was just. But you know what? Because you go straight down on your head. You know what? When you're 20 years old, you are fearless. So yeah. there wasn't anything. The only thing that made me nervous is when a 350 pound woman is picking you up and slamming you down, and that was Mountain Fiji. Yeah. That that right there. Anything that she did, I was like, because. She, when she would do it, she wouldn't just place you down. Mm -hmm. Her strength, it, she would slam you. So I'm a, I'm a buck 15 back then. And throwing me on the mat, I would scream as loud as I could because I didn't want the air. Because yep. I would hit so hard that, you know, losing your air when you're in a match, uh-uh, that's the worst. Uh, so that would have that would have been it. It was anything that Fiji did to me. You know, Jeannie, too, um, real quick. When, when I was in high school watching you on Glow, you looked like you were 6'2 or something. I mean, ah. when you, like, because you were way taller than, like, and I just want to tell the audience, when I you watch me. those Glow episodes, Jeannie is, like, all legs, and she looks like she's 6'2", and she towers over a lot of the other wrestlers. So when I met you a few months ago, I'm assuming yeah. you were going to tower over me, and you had heels on, and you weren't that tall. No. But you no. looked super tall on the show compared to everybody else camera angles it's no i know i'm just saying angles. i'm just saying but daryl go back Sorry. okay daryl so yeah so it was feeding it daryl that anything that she did i love cool. that lady i i, I thought she was amazing. me too um a sweetheart is, is there gosh i gotta go to music what's it like going on tour <laughs> and, and being backstage and seeing all these amazing acts maybe night in night out i mean that to me would be amazing. i love music i love music since day one so to be able to be in that scenario and be a fan because really i am a fan of that music mm -hmm. it, every night is great it's just i it's a smile on my face every time i'm very blessed and very honored to be able to be in that situation today okay. and that all started back when i was a kid so i have to go back i'll only take a minute here as a kid the next door neighbor um had a band and they would rehearse outside in california and as soon as you heard that music i would just get over on the wall and i'd look and watch and what I was really it? thought that they was it they eddie the and alex who was it was know. it metallica nope i oh. you know who i thought it was you guys because okay if you're eight years old nine years old and you sure. hear a rolling stone song oh. i thought they were the rolling stones they were doing yeah. covers just oh. a band that was my first love of live music. Very cool. That is What's amazing. your favorite all-time band? Led Zeppelin. Grew, I, I I feel I love a lot of bands, but or Van Van Halen. I'm a huge Van Halen freak. Gosh, I love Van Halen. Me yeah. too. I mean, growing up in California, the music. I, I just wish that I was born maybe ten years earlier. That way, I could see that '60s Jimi Hendrix and uh, yeah. the Doors and mm -hmm. and well, certain bands and Cream and gosh, we're Janice. real happy. We're real happy that you were born when you were, yeah. Because <laughs> then you would have never been on Glow, 
and True. we wouldn't have been talking to you right now. And True. you you would have been still that hot phlebotomist somewhere um, <laughs> instead uh, of being on GLOW. Uh, yeah. By the way, I want to be a patient at that place back in 1986, but uh, that's beside <laughs> the point. Um, Daryl, you got two more questions and then we'll call it a night. Hit, go. Well, I was going to say, uh, who was your favorite band to see not being like Kiss or Ace Freely? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not Kiss, outside but your I love band Kiss. You see day in and day out. Um, well, I went to the Us Festival. And so oh, wow. That was, what, that was all those bands. Wow. I went to see Motley Crue and see the Scorpions and see Judas Priest. Van Halen. That was great. And Van Halen. So there That's you have it. That right there. 1983. Yeah. That was, wow. that was the uh, festival for me of all concerts. Wow, was that mm -hmm. Jeannie? That is awesome. Um, yeah, my, we'll can talk I, music my more. Last question. We we can talk. Yes, of course. Let one last know. question is: uh, yes, I need to get a comic book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so you know, we we can hook uh, this up you know or something, me. and, and yeah, I, I just want to get one. And you know. so, Jeannie, great. you got conventions coming up. Um, you got any I'm more comic? Book? You doing any more comic books? Uh, right now, John's going to do something after we're done. He's got something coming up with the hard covers or soft covers, and he's working on the first four that they did. So he's got something coming up. I was, I have something coming up. I'm not going to tell you yet. That'll be for our next show. How's All right. That? Well, and also yeah. Jeannie, um, I am book related. You know, I'm a comic book creator. Of course, I'm working on Venerella number two right now, which you haven't seen Venerella number one because I was doing Miss America when you met right. me. Right. However. Remember. Misty America 2, she's a time traveler. At the end oh. of Misty America 2, she is going to, spoiler, wind up in some decade around the time of GLOW. I love in it. In issue number three, she has to do a wrestling match. And you <laughs> and I are going to speak about maybe who she might wrestle in one of those perfect. books. Perfect. I have the perfect girl I'll her. talk to your attorneys <laughs> I'll have to talk to your attorneys and see what I can do, but I would like her to to wrestle a, a an actual female wrestler from the eighties. And if I have to, I'll call her like Bollywood or something. But we'll, we'll work something out. I love it. That's Jeannie. Um, last question, and then we're gonna let you go. All right. Um, glow. Best memory about here here's you lived it we watched it i'd like you to know whether it's in the ring or off what's the thing that you think about about your years as a glow wrestler that brings a smile to your face never regret never sadness even if it's wow, I did this scissor kick in this match against somebody. I just want to know if you could sum it up or try to summarize it so we can get that glow from you. No, oh, I love it. Just be, it's an honor to be in it. Um, yeah, and if you're not in it, you can't win it. So um, <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Um, summing it up. Oh, God. Anything that stands out, even if someone threw you in the pool, at the back of the Riviera or the swastikas. So I was going to say, even the swastikas. That's yeah, yeah. Just, there's so many memories. That's all it is. I, you, I know, you. you have to go back to Las Vegas. Vegas, it just brings us, every time I go to Vegas, I will I, always think of the girls wrestling, David McClain in the phone booth outside, to us out by the pool doing our, our um, we had sketches there, the elevator, the sketches with Matilda the Hun are classic. <laughs> Uh, in the even casino, that, the stuff even that, that we got away with. Even that first time we ever saw him, he's in that phone booth outside, outside. and he's yes. a man. He's not here, and his man. He's like, hey, did I get any calls? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> we our minds were blown. We saw That's those what things. Our show was about. That's we had what no was idea about. what we were watching, and then all of a sudden, there's women in lingerie wrestling. <laughs> and and by the way, the one thing that I could see that when you watch old videos whether it's Sonny, the California girl, or you, or whatever, you guys are always pulling your leotards out of your 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 wedges there because <laughs> I don't think they that, had 
Not me. This Not you. I tell what? you, those were the stupid Oh, wait girls. a minute. What are we Sorry. seeing here? Wait. You <laughs> know, what you do is we had these little hooks, and I would put the hook right here, oh. and I'd have the hook in the pantyhose, and I'd stick the hook in from the pantyhose into thy lawn, mm. this thing, and pull, keep it down. Well, you look when I'm doing those matches, I'm not usually pulling anything. Well, everybody watching the, the stream, you should have started with that. <laughs> yeah. But hey, hey, uh, I want to thank everybody for being on the, the live stream tonight. <laughs> I want to thank uh, my guest, Jeannie Basson, Hollywood. Everybody, please look up Damn. Hollywood. Everybody, look up HollywoodBotanica.com. Please check out Michael Strider and his theatrical outputs. I want to give Michael a mention. He said he was a photographer kit for Kiss. So we've probably all seen Michael's work over the years. Uh, he also did some shoots with Jeannie back in the day. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Howard Simon. Says, awesome interview. Thanks, Jeannie. Just wish there was a funny Thanks, Hollywood and Aunt Kitty and David McLean sketch to end it. Well, I'll be David McLean, Jeannie Dang it. Hollywood. I knew that was coming. And, and oh. Daryl can be Miss Kitty. <laughs> um, this is Kitty's Kitty's Killers. Um, uh -huh. Jeannie, I want to thank you for coming to me live from uh, Tennessee tonight. I want to thank you for uh, hanging out with us. We you kept you, awesome. I kept you, I kept you five minutes longer, but it oh, was good. worth it. Um, and we again, have, I hope, we have to I get hope everything to, in. <laughs> I hope to. Oh yeah, I think we did. And you know what? You always want to leave them wanting a little bit more, so we could do another one. Daryl, Daryl, I Daryl, I want to give you a second to uh, plug uh, what you got coming up, my friend. I honestly don't know right now because okay. uh, some family issues are are, are messing okay. things up. But hopefully I'm Saturday so we can have our uh, Simply Incredible podcast. Well, prayers and, and vibes to you, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you, man. All right, and Thanks Jeannie, for having us on, uh, you guys, if you want to follow, Instagram is official Glow Hollywood. That's right. Twitter is Glow Hollywood. Uh, for the movie, it's Strider Image that is uh, at uh, Instagram as well. And for the soap, it is Hollywood Botanica on Instagram. And remember, go on eBay, Playboy December 1989. <laughs> or come see me at one of those conventions. I'll bring them there. She'll you need to do a convention close to Lynchburg, Virginia, so I can meet you personally. I really need to get to Virginia. Okay, I'll work on it, I promise. Yeah. Um, yes. Jeannie, please... Please hang out for one second after I, sure I end will. the broadcast. Uh, okay. I want to thank everybody for all coming of our on this evening. Uh, again, hit the like button, subscribe button, and I'll uh, I'll see you next week, uh, probably on Tuesday. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, uh, ciao. Be 